Hello and welcome to another House of Wisdom Lightest and Best video where we look at a variety of manufacturers' lightest and best offerings. And today we have Alamic Tactical's new lightest and best offering. It is called the Busker. And Alamic Tactical is based in Mountain View, California. Their shop is in Visalia, California. And they make mid-tech knives. Their motto is never the same. And of all knife companies, they probably have more diversities in finishes they can do on both the blade and handles of anybody. They make great knives. Previously, their smallest knife was the Gambit. It was designed by Serge Pachenko with around a 3-inch blade, but weighed between 4.5 and, and 6.5 and ounces. The other light knife they had, if you had the acid rain configuration, was the Wayfair 24-7. Here is an example of mine. It is a much larger knife. It has a 3.5 inch blade. I'll put it next to the busker so you can get a relative size there. But in the uh, acid rain configuration, it only weighed um, 4.6 ounces. Well, they have a new king of lightest and best, and that's the busker. In the heaviest configuration, full titanium with the Largo blade, and the back bar, it weighs less than 3 ounces, 2.99. And with standoffs instead of the back bar, it weighs uh, 2 and 3 quarter ounces. So it is much lighter than anything that they've done before. All right, the busker was designed by a Russian by the name of Andrei Koleshnikov. And he is a custom maker that does great work. He does design work also. Uh, but in his customs, he'll do hand carving, hand sculpting of the titanium and metals that the handles are made of. He makes some great stuff. I'll try to put a picture up so you can get an idea of the intricacy of his designs. The size of the busker is intentionally made small. They wanted it to have less than a two and a half inch blade length so that it could be used in almost all places available like in Chicago and this one can be. The manufacturing process of Alamic Tactical is a wonder. It starts out, the blades and handles are cut in Italy, and there are a lot of great places that uh, do knife manufacturers in Maniago, for example, Lion Steel, Fox Knives. Anyway, the blanks are cut there, both blades and handles in Italy, and then they're shipped to California. All of the grinding is done on simple machines like belt sanders. There's no CNC machines in their shop. They do it all by hand with simple machines. And Mike Vagnino helps set their shop up, so they have a lot of uh, experience in training their employees that make their knives. Mike Vagnino is a custom maker, and you probably recognize his name. He designed the Kaiser Velox, among other knives. One of the beauties about their business plan is that they have multiple guys working on knives. There are three or four technicians, or should I say artisans, that are making knives in their shop at any time. And one of my favorite things about the company is, is that they say they're going to make a knife for you, custom knife, according to your specifications, in 10 days, and they actually do. Uh, you put your order in online on their website, and then someone who's going to be making the knife calls you and verifies that he's getting it straight and all the finishes and, and types of uh, uh, specifications you have for the knife. And once that happens, they start making it. And then 10 days later, literally, I got an email with pictures of my knife just verifying that this is what I wanted, this is what I ordered, I paid for it, and then three days later it showed up on my doorstep. Literally, from the time I made my order to the time it showed up on my doorstep was less than a two-week period. And this is just refreshing, and I don't know if you guys have had the experience of ordering a custom knife. There's one custom maker I have right now that he promised that it would be four months in making a custom knife. It's been over a year now, and I still don't have the knife, so that can really wear on you when that sort of nonsense happens. Alamic Tactical is not like that. They say they're going to do something, and they perform because they have a great business model. Well, let's get into the specifications of this particular knife, the Busker. The blade length is 2.375 inches. The handle is a three and a half inch handle. And I want to comment, uh, with three and a half inch handles, you can basically get a three finger grip. I have small hands and I can't get a four finger grip. 
but they make allowances, a lot of small handles do. They have a forward finger choil here, and you get a nice four-finger grip. This has been done with a lot of other knives. For example, the ergonomic ideal is the Spyderco Dragonfly. It has the forward half-and-half half finger choil, half on the handle, half on the blade. As you can tell, this finger choil is half on the blade, half on the handle also. Very reminiscent of the Spyderco. Another small knife that did the forward finger choil because the handle is just a little bit too short to get four fingers on there is the Strider PT. They have a forward finger choil there too. So you can have the smaller blades and still have good ergonomics is the nice thing there. The total knife length is six inches. And the weight of the knife in this configuration, full titanium, Largo blade is 2.99 ounces. If you have standoffs instead of a back bar, as this one has, it's down to 2.75 ounces. The blade on this knife is made of M390 steel, one of my favorites. It's in a modified sheep's foot configuration and has a fat, flat ground blade. The jimping on the spine is dual purpose. It opens the blade because this is a front flipper. You flip it like that and it opens. And it is flush with the knife handle so aesthetically it's not sticking up. And it's smooth, much like a Thorburn knife. When you rub your finger over, it's smooth. But when you bear down, you really get grip. But really, that's in the three-fingered grip. If you move up to the forward finger choil, which is a more appropriate four-fingered grip, uh, you have a smooth back of the spine there. So if you go to three-finger grip, you get a little grip. If you're a four-finger grip, it's just the back swell here that your finger fits into nicely. There are two types of blade. The blade you see here is the Largo style blade, and I want to talk about the symmetry of this. As you can tell, you have an upslope here, which mirrors the upslope on the back of the handle, and then you have a center swell, which is symmetric. So it's this nice flowing M-shaped sine wave type of symmetry, which the Semper doesn't have. The advantage of the Semper is, uh, as you can tell when this is closed, here at this end of the knife, at the pivot end, it is a little less than one inch. At the fat end, which is also the clip end, so this will be the top of your knife, it goes up to one and a half inches, and so it's sort of pear-shaped if you have the Largo blade. The Semper blade basically cuts this off so it's a more narrow fit in your pocket. So when you're making your choice of which blade do you want, do you want the symmetry and beauty of the Largo blade, or do you want the functionality of a more narrow blade at the top of your pocket so you can get your keys and your wallet in and out a little bit easier? That's just a design decision that you get to make. Which one do you guys like better? The finishes on the blade with Olamic Tactical with this specific uh, version, there are five different finishes. You can get a satin blade, which doesn't cost anything extra. You can get light and dark stone wash or light and dark two-tone finish. My finish I selected was the light stone wash, so you get to see what that looks like. I like this because it doesn't fingerprint well. And on the blade with their kinetic finish on the handle, it doesn't fingerprint either. It's just one of those great finishes that holds anodization very well. Okay, we'll talk about the method of deployment. There are multiple methods of deployment. I guess the most prominent one would be the front flipper. As you can tell, it protrudes a little bit and has that, uh, I'm going to call it Thorburn-esque type of jimping where it's just a square cut out. You run your finger over it, it's smooth, you bear down on it, it has traction. So if you just grab the knife like this and you put your finger up on the side of your thumb, you can flip it up like that. That's the easiest way to do it. You can also roll it out like that. It has a thumb hole, so you can do a two-hand opening, and you can also do a thumb flick. I just want to say that this is initially going to seem a little abnormal to you. You're going to grab it, you're going to reach down to flick it, and normally your thumb hole is right there. You have to go a little further back in this knife to get it, but when you get back further, it does flick out very nicely. And, of course, you can do it in the spidey flick type method also. For those with long fingers, you can do one of the reach-arounds. I really can't, but I've seen photos of people that can do this. Uh, I just don't do a reach-around well. No pun intended. Well, moving on to the handle. It's a titanium handle. Uh, there's a million ways, never the same as their motto. I got the kinetic finish just because Olamic Tactical is the only one I know that does this finish. And it is kind of a cool finish, I think. It has these lines that are accentuated. 
And I asked Eugene Solomonic, the owner of Alemic Tactical, how they pull that off. And he wouldn't tell me everything except that he said it was a multi-step process. The first step involves getting on a coarse grip sanding belt that makes these line and then they blast it to accentuate those line and somewhere along the process they anodize it. But this is really a cool finish. And the uh, same finish, the kinetic finish, both on the pocket clip and on the handle. So I really like that. Um, the back bar or the standoff, mine is the seabed. They have half a dozen different types of uh, back bar finishes that you can get, or you can get standoffs. The standoffs are free. The back bar costs a little bit extra. And I had the hardware and the back bar with a bronze anodization. Okay, moving on. The stop pin is a free-floating stop pin, and the mid knife, as you can tell, there's not any screws that attach it. You just, when you fasten the uh, body screws and the pivot, it's, it smashes that there, and it is a curved uh, receptacle when in an open position on the blade tang, and it also stops it on the blade tang, which is more flat, on the closed position. The pivot uh, runs on caged bearings, and it's used a Torx bit to uh, undo the pivot. And the pivot, the lock bar, is a frame lock. It has an over-travel stop. See if I can demonstrate that. There you go. And then here you can see the over-travel stop is about in the mid-knife with the lock bar insert. The lockup on this particular knife is about, oh, 15%. It's a very early lockup, and it's very easy to disengage. The pocket clip is a Todd Beg style pocket clip in that it has a piece of titanium that is flat on some titanium elevated pillars, and then it has a ceramic traction ball. Um, their special attention was taken so that the traction point falls on the handle and not on the lock bar. That's a good design because whenever your finger rests on it, uh, you're not pushing against the lock bar and working against yourself to deploy the knife. I say it's a Todd Beggs style clip because Todd Beggs used this type of clip on his knives. Alamic used it too. I want to get the Wayf uh, Wayfair 24-7. As you can tell, they have the pillar construction, flat titanium with a ceramic ball um, traction point. Uh, Todd Beggs does not own the patent of this, and so they don't have to pay them. One of the things I want to point out on the busker is that there is a normal thickness of titanium, but then they milled it out to be a little bit thinner where it would bend, and then it's thick again at the attachment points there. So uh, you have a little more flex to it to get your jeans in and out uh, of the pocket clip. Well, that's the lock, the pocket clip anyway. We'll move on to the ergonomics, and I alluded to this a little earlier that uh, it's a small knife, a three and a half inch handle, and so for me, you can get a four inch if you get right up there, but you can go a little forward and it's comfortably a four finger grip. One of the things that's distinctive about this compared to the other four fingers grip is that the uh, forward finger choil goes right into the blade. And so you might uh, go a little forward and cut your hand. In the Strider PT, they have this area that isn't sharpened so that there's a space between your finger and the cutting edge, the heel of the the, the sharp part. And then with the Spyderco, they have it elevated a little bit. So when you have your, your finger there, you can even go over a little bit and you don't get your finger cut because your finger is in an elevated plane compared to the cutting edge of the knife. This one, you just have to be careful that you don't move your hand too far forward and cut yourself. Okay, the signage. Uh, the maker's mark is present on the blade. The handle is sterile both on the clip and the show side. On the show side of the blade, it has a lamic with the lamic symbol there, and then busker. And then on the clip side of the blade, it has the steel type, which in this case is M390. On the inside of the back bar of those knives that have the back bar, you can see it has B043L on my particular knife. The B stands for the the model number, which is the busker. The L is for the blade type, which is Largo in mine. For those that have the Semper, it will be an S. And then the 43 is for the number 
of production of that particular knife. It's not the total number of the buskers, it's the total number of the busker largos. So the simpers are not included in this 43 number. They have their own numbering system, so it's specific to the B and the L, the 43rd that has both the B and the L in it. Okay, the action of the knife, the front flipper works very well. And uh, the thumb stud is a bit of a challenge, as I've mentioned, because your, your hand normally wants to sit there. So you have to get a little back, but it really rockets it out. Look there, I just failed on it, but uh, it works fine uh, once you get your thumb in the correct orientation. The value of this model, the base model of this knife, if you just get titanium handles, satin blade, and standoffs, is only $365. Mine, because I customized everything that could be customized, cost a little less than $500. I had the blade stone washed. The handle and clip had the kinetic finish and were anodized. The back bar has the seabed sculpting. The hardware and pivot are bronze, anodized. Everything you could customize about this knife, I did customize, and it still came in at less than $500. There are some finishes that will take you over $500. For example, if you get uh, Mokotai or Timascus insets in the handle, they'll do anything you want, but the higher, more expensive materials will cost you more. So what do I think about the Olamic Tactical Busker? I absolutely love it, and I thank you, Alamic Tactical, for making a small and light knife for those of us who like EDC knives. Are there opportunities for improvement? Well, I just want to talk about preferences. First of all, the thumb hole, to me, doesn't fall at a natural place. You have to get your thumb back a little bit. It does work very well, though, and I talked to Eugene Solomonic about it, and he said this was a very intentional design feature because they felt that it actually flies out better if you put the thumb hole back a little bit, so that's just their preference. I just wanted to let you know how it seems to me. Another thing that could be improved is that they didn't do any interior milling in the design, and so that's just a design feature, but it could have been even lighter, although less than three ounces. I can't complain much about that, but they could have made it a little lighter had they done internal milling on the handle scales. And the other thing, which is the design preference, is uh, it's a little bit thick on the Largo version of the blade at the top. If you get the Simper, though, you can get it more narrow at the top. So it all depends on if you like the symmetry of the Largo or the narrowness of the Simper, but that would be something that would need to come into your decision tree whenever you order your own knife. What do I like about the knife? Oh, there's a lot to like about this knife. First of all, it has a unifying aesthetic. Did you notice how this oval thumb hole is exactly the same except for a different size as the oval lanyard hole? And I like it. Well done, Andrei Kalashnikov, of giving a unified aesthetic theme to the knife. I like the unique design, too. A front flipper made in America. The South Africans make a lot of front flippers, but there is not a lot of front flippers in the U.S. market. So thank you, Olamic Tactical, for thinking about something like that. As well as being small, it's a unique knife. The other thing I like about Olamic Tactical is that they are artisans. They get the blades and the handles cut by the, uh, the people over in Italy. I don't know if it's Lion Steel or Fox or which one, but in Maniago there's a ton of high-quality knife makers. And then they do the custom features all done by hand. They grind the blades, they finish the blades, they finish the handles in a million different ways, and they're all basic um, machines that they use. They don't use CNC machines. And I talked with Eugene about how do you get so many types. I mean, do you just decide all the types and then say, okay, I'm going to train you guys how to do this? No, the artisans on the floor, they'll kind of experiment and come up with something and say, hey, that looks cool. Let's use that as one of our designs. And so they do, and that's how they get the variety. It sounds like an incredibly fun place to work where you get to use creativity, not just cranking out knives. The business model. As much as I like the knives, i got to say I love their business model. They have a near limitless ability to come up, customize your knife, and they have the timeliness in production because they run the business like a business. It's just not a one-man show, and when he has a day off, he works a little bit on knives, and he runs not only days but months over on your orders, sometimes years over on your orders. From start to finish, it was only 10 days to produce the knife, and it was on my doorstep within two weeks from start to doorstep. 
That is wonderful. That makes me happy. It makes me smile. And this is a knife in summary that if you wanted to enter the custom knife arena, I would recommend this. You're not going to be burned. You can trust this company. They'll make it exactly like you like it in a time frame that they promise to do it. Alamic Cutlery makes knives uh, with speed and efficiency, and they have a great business model, and they make great knives. So I highly recommend the Alamic Buster. Well, let me know what you think about the Alamic Busker in the comments section. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next House of Wisdom Lightest and Best video.